Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now today is uh, tweakery video number four, uh, I think. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about isolation. Um, I mean, years ago we didn't really sort of talk about isolation in the same way because I think when it was re sort of mainly record player based systems, the sort of accepted way of doing things was you would have a lightweight table just for the record player because you what you don't want is anything that's susceptible to vibration sitting on anything high mass because the high mass will almost absorb resonance and transmit it and you, you get a, a much bigger range of resonances going on in high mass. So you want to try and lower that mass so it lowers resonance. Um, and how it used to be, well, you'd, you'd have a, a very lightweight table for your record player, sometimes lightweight for your amplifier, lightweight for, you know, perhaps pre-power, you'd have them on separate tables and it was, it was a big string of tables with all your, your hi-fi kit on. It's not really particularly acceptable that nowadays. Um, there's a definite sort of movement towards everything being in single boxes, which I think is taking it too far, but a single rack with your hi-fi system on seems to be the way that people want to do it now, the record player and everything underneath. Um, which is okay, except it does create, you know, even though it's, even if you have a fairly lightweight table, by having all the equipment on there, you're creating mass and creating places for the resonance to become absorbed and transmitted and get back into the, back into the system. And it isn't just record players that are affected. Amplifiers, CD players, they're all affected to a degree. I think record players are probably the worst speakers as well, but then, but even electronics, there's a certain levels of sort of microphony involved that they do pick up. Um, I mean, in, in early days, obviously things like, well, even today, valve amplifiers are very effective. You can tap on, tap on the case and you can hear it through the speakers on some because they do pick up. I mean, it's, it's not, I did actually read a comment on somebody, um, I think it was a Facebook page of a competitor of mine who was advertising a little isolation platform that they make. And somebody put on there, if your equipment is microphonic, just throw it away and buy one that's properly designed, which I thought is a little bit naive uh, because pretty much everything, everything picks up, everything transmits um, in that way. So yeah, you, you're just going to try and, try and control it really. So what we're looking at now, we've got various forms of isolation here, um, whether you can see them on camera there or not, I'm quite sure, just got a few things. I've got um, MusicWorks Acuplex little discs, which are a bit of an oddity, um, which we'll talk about in a sec. I've got um, Nordos so sort cones, which are these little cones. They're the sort of budget favourite focal pods, which are little squishy, squishy feet. Uh, don't do these anymore, but this is an audiophile base platform which has got little feet underneath. Uh, and then this, the sort of elephant in the, in the room, which is a sonority platform, which um, takes things in a whole different direction, literally, um, of isolating that in that way. Um, so just to go through one by one, um, little Zobothane feet, the focal pods, and these are great, you just stick them, literally stick them under anything. I am told, I've never actually tried this, but they're basically the same material that you make um, squash balls out of. So if you want a really cheap way of doing this, I mean these are about £30 a set I think. If you want to do it cheaply then just buy some squash balls and cut them in two. Now whether or not you could actually cut them particularly accurately and get everything level, I don't know. Um, but apparently people do that and it does, does work quite well. I have a tendency to put a, have a platform put these underneath. You don't always get consistent results with these, I've found. I've, I've tried them onto some things and it's made it worse. Um, but generally, they seem to work quite well. But it's one of those things to try. I mean, I've got them in the shop. If you ever want to try any, any of these, just, bring, just come, in, come in and borrow a set. Um, but they're just very, yeah. So generally, I think they, they, they will sort of isolate lower frequencies. But further up the range, they're, they're, it's sort of out of their working area, really. So you probably wouldn't get... Um, an amazing sort of performance from that from that point, but generally they do think make things sound a little bit more sort of sort of spacious I mean, under most things. Um, similar to that, I mean, this is an audiophile bass platform. This is almost like I was talking about with those where if you if you put them under under a board, I got I got told off by the manufacturer actually on this because I actually advertise these on the I used to put them on the website. Um, this is a bit of a, a beaten up version; it's quite old now. Um, I said it was a an isolation platform, and I got a, a, a quite long email from the manufacturer saying it is not an isolation platform, it is a vibration control device. 
which I know what he means. This, this is kind of what it's doing, really, because this has got sort of the squishy the bar across here, which is actually mounted on, I suspect, Zorbethane, actually, but it's designed to work as a unit. It's not that the, the um, Zorbethane feet are a little bit random, really, and the, the performance. This is a sort of everything is everything is designed to work together, and it is a very effective platform. I'm not sure these are still available. I think um, I tried to find Audiophile Base uh, on the internet and they don't seem to have a web page. I can't actually find them anymore, but I used to deal with them years ago, and it just did quite well with these. Um, as far as, yeah, the next one I'm gonna talk about is little Music Works Acuplex. Now these are a bit of an oddity, I'll just come close. These are just like little flat discs, which, you can see it, are made of a quite strange material. It's kind of a plastic, but I think it's, um, now this is, yeah, yeah, I don't know, uh, this is where things start to sound a little bit crazy, but it's apparently a medical grade plastic, or well, there's two types of medical grade plastic, which are, is their formulation. Um, and I've tried, they do some little cones, uh, which are called, I can't remember actually, what little cones are made. I've experimented with the little cones they make, and I got very mixed results with those. I thought they seem as though they accentuate certain frequencies and kill other frequencies, and... Initially, you put them on and think, oh, these are great, but then realise you're missing something. These are actually quite good. I mean, they just go under the feet. And it's, it's like it acts as a barrier between the equipment and whatever it's sitting on. And they, they're quite, they're quite effective. They don't look like they would be, but they are actually quite effective, those. Not, they don't work every time. So these are another one that if you wanted to try them, uh, just come in the shop and I'll let you, you know, take some off for the weekend and just see what you think. But, um, yeah, they're a bit of an oddity. Um, medical grade plastic, I don't, is there such a thing? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it does seem to does seem to work quite well. They're not cheap actually. They're three times the price of focal pods. Um, but I think this material apparently is extremely expensive, and this is their own formulation of. So it's like I was said in, in other videos. Anything that's made in you know on a small scale like this is always expensive. Uh, but it's one of those things. If it, if it if it works for the system, then it works for the system, doesn't it really? Um, very in the next one is quite an interesting one. And years ago, I used to do ooh, I used to do really well with a Nordos pulsar points. And the pulsar point, well, there's two bits of aluminium, one with a cone and one with a little, little dimple on it. And they sat they, they sat together. When they was they were together, they were very unstable. It's, but you put three or four and put your equipment on, and they they sat straight. As soon as they were, they, had, they were under load, they sat straight. And they were really effective. The, the, uh, the improvement to clarity and everything on anything you put them under, they, they, were, they were consistently good. And they were. Tr I think the, thing, the way they worked was to try and control the way the vibration sort of was, came out of the product. I didn't quite understand the, the theory behind them, but they did seem to work. They were, they were sort of a controlling of vibration rather than trying to stop it. Um, the weird thing with those was they did in two versions. The aluminium versions were actually quite affordable, and you know it was one of those things where you, they work, so it doesn't really matter how much they are. I'll just, I'll just get us that. They did a titanium version, which was even back then were over three hundred pounds, I think. Which is crazy money for these little things, but they were substantially better than the aluminium version, which is interesting. I mean, you wouldn't have thought. You would have thought, well, it's just you know isolation, but the actual material made a huge difference because titanium is a much deader material than the aluminium was, and it just seemed to make that much more of a a difference. Unfortunately, they stopped making those, um, and they replaced them with. You can see these. These are the uh, salt cone, which are better again. I don't actually. Sell, for some reason, I don't really sell many of these, and I've never quite figured out why. I'll just bring it a bit closer to show the structure of these. Um, it's like an outer cone. This what this is the uh, the bronze version. You can see the foot there. That is the actual brass bit on the top is sort of separate. So I think we've got like a pulse point effect internally on these. You can't take them apart to have a look, really, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but they do different versions. These are the cheapest version, um, price of which escaped me for, for the moment. But there's also an aluminium version. There's a titanium version, which is, yeah, really expensive. Um, and they all sound different. They all sound cons totally different to each other. Nordos actually say that you should mix them around a little bit. If you've had a couple of titaniums and a... A, br uh, a brass, is it a bron bronze brass? I can't remember, I think it's bronze. Um, is it? <laughs> Knocked him over. 
it's, it doesn't say, I can't remember. I can't remember. Bronze or brass. Um, that you should put this one under the transformer and then have other materials under the rest of it. I think that's getting a bit overcomplicated, to be honest. I don't quite... It possibly does work, but it, it, I think it, there's so many permutations involved in that that I think it's it's too too mind blowing to try it, try it. But they are quite they are effective. I mean, this particular one, the brass one or bronze, whatever it is, is is really effective. Um, the only thing I say about them, they do make things sit quite high. So I don't know. But there's, again, I've got a set of those in the shop if anybody wants to try them. Now the next one is. Sonority. Um, I haven't sold any of these for a while, and I was a bit worried that he might, the chap who makes these might have stopped doing them. Uh, but this was probably one of my most popular products at one point. And the Sonority table, as you can see, there's no isolation that way, it's solid. But if you give it a push, it's totally free in that respect. And the way these work, this is a, a very early prototype, this one. I'll just take that off, try not to drop it. On the top here, well, I'll, do, I'll, I'll move the camera actually, um, just so you can have a proper look at this, because this is, it's, this is really interesting the way this works. It's, in, it's good and it's bad in lots of respects, and I'll explain the bad in a second. Okay, so this is the sonority, um, sonority badge. We've got three carbon tungsten carbide bearings sitting in some sort of, I don't know what, it's not metal, I don't think, a little cap there. Um, as you can see the whole thing rocks alarmingly because I'll just have to see if I can do this without getting ball bearings everywhere. I'll lift the top plate off. It's underneath we've got more ball bearings. So there's a bit larger size and these sit, these sit in a little cup and there's a a, a sort of complementary cup on the bottom of the other shelf that they sit on, and then there's this material underneath as a little foot as well. Now the difference that these make is actually astonishing. I mean, it's probably one of the best isolation um, platforms I've ever ever come across. Not cheap, uh, not cheap at all actually, but there's an awful lot of work goes into these, and it, they, they are a low volume product again. Um, but these are like a, a quite complex laminate. Um, the, the, like I said, this, this is a prototype, and the, the later versions didn't look like this, and the, the, there's quite a, there's a few differences between this prototype and the production ones, which the production one is quite a lot better, to be fair. Um, for one, the alignment of these is different. They don't, it's because um, the alignment of the base on this is the same as the top, and on the later ones it was reversed, so that there was no direct um, transmission through. But I, early days, put one of these under, I think it was an MCD2 at the customer's house, CDX2, and it was under a CD player, and you think, well, CD player, is that going to be improved on? But wow, yeah, wasn't it just? It was really, really improved it. Uh, much more dynamic and open and, and everything. Um, and like I said, I've never quite understood, because basically all it's giving you is um, three points of isolation here, point to point, and then another three points of isolation above that. Whether the rocking gives you any advantage, I don't know, but the only slight issue I would say with the rocking is that I've got a customer, I've got a couple of customers now who've got multiple um, sonority tables and they're a nightmare. If you want to sort of move anything in your system or rewire anything or uh, the tendency for ball bearings to sort of fall down the back of your rack and things like that, and it's, they can be really frustrating, but they work brilliantly. Um, they do work absolutely brilliantly. Yeah, so that's isolation. Um, obviously, there's other, other things as well out there. There's, um, I do the Project Isolate It platform, which is good. Um, Townsend do the seismic, no, seismic Sync, which is very similar to the, the Townsend Bars that I did the, that one of the previous Tweakery videos on, uh, like a sprung, sprung platform, which works really well. So there's, there's loads of ways of doing it, but like I say, there's some, some, some types of are like a very hard fixed foot which is trying to draw vibration out, spongy feet that are trying to isolate it at that point at certain frequencies, there's uh, like I say the wobbly tables and all this sort of thing. Um, I remember there was a quadraspire rack years ago which was they used to call wobbly bob, uh, which was every level of it was decoupled and you could push the table and the whole table rocked which is re really alarming, but it was a good table. Um, not everybody quite took to that because it, it was a bit 
was a bit bizarre. But um, so he's, yeah, there's all sorts of mad stuff out there. But he, it's worth pursuing it. It's worth looking into and experimenting with because you, you do get this sort of lift in clarity and dynamics. And usually the big difference is you get a lot more sort of uh, stereo image. You get a, a much better image placement and that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, Slightly crazy one, but um, it's interesting. It does, things like this do interest me because it, it's, it's when there's things that shouldn't, you can't quite understand why things are making a difference, but you do get quite, sometimes quite radical differences. Oh yeah, leave it there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. Thanks for all, this, uh, all the comments and email. Um, I'll see you in a future video. Thank you very much.